we're going to do a uh, leak down test on four stroke XS 650 today. And we're going to try a little trick. We've already tested this motor and it's leaking pretty bad. And we're going to try a little uh, um, wood tapping trick that seems to work pretty well just to give us an idea if it's just carbon that's built up, especially something that's been sitting for a while. As we look at these older engines and we can kind of see that they look like they have some age on there or the fact that they've just been sitting, we don't necessarily want to take a whole engine down that probably would have self-fixed its, fixed itself in just a few minutes of running by knocking that carbon loose. So this is a cool trick to our customers where we could determine, hey, you know what? Maybe we'll just set the valves, clean the carbs, change the fluids, and try and bring that thing back into life. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, He's got to set the motor at what position, Chance? Top dead center compression. Okay, so one way that we can identify that is we could take and just wiggle the valves, and we're going to do that on both of these, and we see that they're, that they're free, okay? Now, this one here is a little tight, okay? I can move it, though, so does that mean I have clearance? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Since I can move it, I have clearance, but I'm going to tell you, I am going to bet you when we go to stick our feeler gauge, in that intake, it's going to be too tight, okay? For the purpose of this test, it is not holding the valve open. So let's go ahead and we're going to, let's get, Derek, let's get you over here and you're going to hold that wrench. The two of you guys are going to perform this test. And then I'll go ahead and just kind of pre-spray uh, the port here. And I'm going to do like the head gasket area and I'll come around and do the, uh, the intake valves. That'll help blow those bubbles up and really show where the leak is at. Make sense? Yep. All right, guys. Derek, you got to get a better support of that. And the best thing you can do is position that wrench to where it's actually being held down on the bench or something else, if, if possible. Are you fully engaged on the socket? Looks like he is. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to support the motor. Since we're not in the chassis, this could, when you put air pressure that, uh, it could just actually flip the motor right off the bench. So. Make sure we're clear on that. We're going to get some help before we're beating on things or uh, putting air to this. So, uh, the other thing about leak down test, the way we train on this, is you don't go right to the hundred. Some of the videos that we watched on the training videos have you set the tool to a hundred psi of the inlet side through this adjustable valve, and then they coupled it to the engine. It's too aggressive, and it just it puts that blast of air in there. The reason I don't like that is it's hard to control the engine to stay in top dead center compression. The other thing is, if I start to put 20 PSI, 30 PSI, 50 PSI, and it's 100% leakage, I've probably accidentally set the motor on overlap, and I'm, I'm wasting time anyway. Okay, so this allows us to just create a, a buildup of information. Go ahead. You gotta pull the cap down, it's got a lock, there you go. Did everybody hear that about the tool? It's got a lock so that when you set it to a set, you don't bump it. If you really want it locked at 100 for like a tire machine or something, you can uh, plug that in. You holding it there? Yep. The you hear this? Listen. That's only at 50 PSI, and I know he's in the right position, and I can see that I can wiggle this. If I couldn't wiggle this, then that would be a problem. So now what we're going to do is I want you to knock that down, knock it down uh, all the way, take all the air pressure off it, what I'm gonna do is, we got no air in there, right? right. Disconnect that. I need, I need the, just wanna have everything off. Now I don't wanna sit and take this thing and just beat it as hard as I can because the piston's at top dead center. Mm -hmm. So if I were to take and move that, you know, attempt to try and move it over a half inch or something, I can guarantee there's not enough space, there's not enough valve lift that I would smack that valve. What I'm trying to do is just, I'm basically getting the valve to tap against the seat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep doing this, but you're going, to, you're going to add pressure at the same time. Now here's the trick about this. By adding the pressure, if there's any carbon in there, the air pressure pushing into the cylinder as I bounce the valve will potentially take and push the debris out. Pretty cool. So safety glass is on because it's going to be coming at me. Okay, now let's do this. Now we were just pouring out before leaking, weren't we? Look at this. Look how much we've improved. Check this out, guys. That's awesome. Oh, right on. How freaking awesome is that? That's perfect. Okay, I said that I felt confident we were going to bring this motor back into a totally serviceable engine 
Now look, I can't get 100. We don't have enough uh, shop pressure right now. Something else must be being consumed by the air compressor. But I have about 80, I got about 86 PSI and we're at a 20% a loss at 86% uh, PSI coming in. What did we say is kind of the common maximum allowable leak not in service manuals, but used in the industry to just to say this motor's worth fixing. About 20%. 20%. Is this cool? Yes. I'm glad we got this on video because this is what we're talking about. You know, if we went by the manual, we would have condemned this engine. Oh, junk, it needs to be taken apart. There's a really good chance. Now, he's this is his own motor, so he's going to do gaskets and, and train from it. And uh, you're going to learn everything about this XS650, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but if this were a customer's bike, I wouldn't even be pulling this out of the frame. I'd be literally doing the same trick to all the valves. I'd be adjusting the valves. I'd be putting some oil down the cylinder, lubing it up, turning it over, and then I would be doing a carb job, maybe a set of points, and I'd fire this baby up. So well, it, it ran before the. the um it but it sat for how long? Regardless, well, it, it, it sat for two hold, years. Hold on. You know what? You know what he just did. Uh, I'm going to use you as an example. He did what every customer does. They come in, they go, what do you mean I got $800 bill? It ran. It ran when I parked it. Well, if it ran so beautiful, why'd you park it? You know what I mean? It's, it's one of those deals. No matter what it used to be, that's good data to collect. We want to collect that data. When did it run last? Did you store it? Did you winterize it? Did you treat the fuel system? Did you fog the engine? Did you air the tire? I mean, everything, we want to collect all that data about that vehicle, but the reality of it is the test didn't lie. We had 80 to 90% leakage before we did our, our little trick here, and, that, and that's what that is. That's that corrosion and, and carbon buildup that, that was on there, and the last time this thing ran, would it, you know, sometimes it's just simply enough that you turn the motor over and a piece of that old carbon gets between the valve and seat and then has this massive leak. Make sense? Yeah. So guys, for YouTube and for you guys use this for re review, this is a good way to really get a better uh, assessment on what's going on uh, inside of this engine.